It's no mystery that Bleed Esports has been struggling quite a bit, and by struggling I mean not winning anything except for one match. And we have seen that yay, well, he isn't particularly playing very well. But Zeph, why are we here? Why are we talking about this? Well, let me tell you, it has nothing to do with the performance here on Bleed versus Paper Rex that just happened a couple of hours ago. No. We're talking about some of the pettiest drama in NA between Ye, which, by the way, is not an active participant in this drama, aside from maybe one comment he made to try to defend himself. We're talking about Steel, Gangsta, and whoever's associated with them. Shortly after this, uh, the Bleed's owner would, um, would go on Twitter and say, I'm tired of losing, that's all I'm going to say. And he doesn't say anything specifically, he doesn't say of anybody who's going to get kicked off, he's just saying he's tired of losing. And obviously this probably means that there's some roster changes gonna, that are going to come up. To give more context about this drama, we first have to go back to when uh, Crazy Guy had been benched. He went on his Twitch channel and had mentioned that Ye was not practicing like a month before... Um, the first uh, stage had started off, the kickoff stage in Pacific. Um, this prompted Ye to respond, Normally I don't like getting involved with drama, but this is just a flat out lie. For context, accounts are region locked, and the only way to change region in Valorant is to have Riot do it manually. Now, he's coming from NA, he's going to pack, like, it. yeah, it's gonna be different. My main account was transferred over to APAC. I f uh, if I fly back to NA, I'm still forced onto APAC server, 200 ping, I've done it, it's awful, which is unplayable. Instead of going back and forth between Riot every time I'm in NA and APAC, having two accounts is easier. Part of the reason why we had a month break is I needed to go back to US and pack up my LA apartment and move in it. Since my lease was ending and breaking it earlier would have cost an insane amount of money, I and I don't have any family in LA, so I need to move all my stuff, uh, plus car, to Texas, which is a 20-hour drive. By the way, that is a grueling drive for anyone who's ever done it. Before Christmas and New Year's, I'm also uh, on top of that, had to get my Japan visa, which is uh, why I was having issues. Uh, Ominous never asked me for my alt account. I can verify this. Either way, this is super weird to bring up and would assume I'm an anyone assumes that I'm auto lying about it. This will probably be the only time I resp respond to all this weird drama. I'm going uh, back and forth. I will say that s some of the things that happen, if they happen in any other professional team, that person would instantly be kicked, fired for the first time, let alone multiple times. This seemed like a perfectly reasonable response to what is pretty much kind of slandering uh, towards Ye, especially because he couldn't practice. You have to understand that Ye moved from Los Angeles in the United States to South Korea. Do you understand how hard it is to even just move from town to town, let alone to move from one country to another? I've moved from one country to another. It takes months to do. It's not a just a, you pick up your things and you're gone. It, has, it does not work that way. It's so ridiculous that this would be thrown in the first place. And I didn't make a video because I thought, oh, it's just, they're just passing comments. Like, nothing will come out of this. But yeah, surely enough, we get more stuff. And before I go to that, let me go back to um, uh, an interaction that Steel had on the VCTEMEA stream. He gets happy watching you bleed. He's scary. Dare I even say he's a crazy guy. But do you see an ego on him? Or is he happy? Is he a happy guy that shouts, yay, we won after a big round. CNET's been- you, Do you understand the amount of cringe you have to go in order to make these type of comments on an official VCT stream. You're supposed to be a professional. You're not supposed to bring your petty back and forth between you and Ye onto a VCT stream. That's not where it ends. Gangsta would then leak this uh, communication between uh, the, the members of DSG. And if you recall earlier, 
earlier in the year, there was like a, cl a clip that was leaked where Ye was on one side of Bine and uh, one of his teammates was on the other one. And Ye says, worry about your own sight. And this was supposed to expose Ye as a toxic teammate. And then this clip uh, is surfaced. Drake, do this. Wow. Start, start B main. Get one or two guys inserted, then do mid pressure. Last right, round one. in the half. Come on, one. Oh, we'll pay attention to the mid. Will you guys take B main? Yeah, she carries on off the Rimba. We can get um, either breach or rocket off of this B main as well. I'm gonna counter. Again, the sun. Alright, I got breach out, watch out, guys. Watch out, 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 Fuck, man. Fuck now. Amka, did you not hear me say get inserted, be main with he, two he... guys? Uh, no, you didn't say two guys. <laughs> I said get inserted. Right, right. Funny man, funny man. I'm by down, man. Well done. <laughs> Roll that fuck out here. Amka, you can fucking laugh all you want, bro, but it's so tilting when you make the same fucking mistakes in matches. What, what the happened? fuck? Alright, I'm getting active. We're dead. Oh, oh god, man. Oh, yeah. Start plant. Be back site. Um, then he goes on to to basically mock what uh, Ye had said on Reddit. If it happened on any other professional team, they would instantly be kicked and fired uh, for the first time, let alone multiple times. And by the way, these are just words. Uh, then he goes to throw out a pretty much a blank accusation saying he tried to bribe my coach with a thousand uh, ten thousand dollars USD to bench me. Uh, by the way, he should have taken it I'm like what? You just throw this accusation and uh, this is gangsta. I'm busy. What I I uh, I got the most uh, Rolf stuff. Uh, take the 10k, split it with me, and then they just go on to like laugh. Um, play the rest of the split, knowing this information. By the way, I've had uh, probably 20 different teams since the start of my career, and none of it has been difficult. To, no one has been as difficult to play with. Sorry, uh, bleed players. I hope you guys have a better time than we did. Why do I do this now? For content. To give insight. Uh, I'm a hater. Not as much as Steel. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, for the juicy NA drama. I'm retired and I also feel bad for the players who are going through similar stuff. Alright, back to being retired. And then he's... Let's look at the replies first. And, like, right off the bat, like, you have uh, people like uh, Static who is a pretty big personality on Twitter. If someone bribed my coach 10k to, to bench me, and then later on went, went on to have one of the biggest downfalls of any pro, pro player I've ever seen, surely that's enough karma for me to be satisfied. Posting a regular rage clip from a scrim means nothing. Everyone would get tilted if their teammate was facing loss after loss and showing no signs of improvement in practice. Post a clip like this, this literally means nothing except to show how spiteful you are. I mean, that's perfectly put, to be perfectly honest. Um, then uh, you have Steel saying the community uh, cannot on the one hand say if something happened that would change the narrative, then post something instead of subtweeting. Then when uh, someone shares a clip, it changes to why would you post this? It's unprofessional because it is unprofessional. It, why would you ever do this? It's like people have never played a sport or participated in in like a intense group activity where people are under pressure to perform. Have you ever been part of a group project? Have you ever been the one guy who's doing what feels like is the most sometime for the team? They're trying to add those extra little details to the presentation. And then there's just this one guy who is doing absolutely nothing. I'm not accusing that of being the issue. But what I'm saying is... Yeah, some people are trying to improve. Some try some people are trying to communicate. Some people are trying to work together as a team. And when you're quote unquote exposing because someone gets frustrated that things aren't, uh, you're not striving to improve. Yeah, of course people people are gonna call this unprofessional because you don't air dirty dirty laundry between your team to in a public forum. That's just you don't do that. Uh, Mel would come out and say, "I promise, uh, I promise you could." 
cast a bad light anyone in the scene if you post uh, clips out of context. Uh, competing is grueling and nobody is immune to stress. It's sad to see that the team never resolved any tensions uh, from competing together or got any closure uh, to move on a year later. And yeah, I have never, never seen Ye say one negative thing about the people on his roster other than things didn't work out and they had chemistry issues. I'm not saying uh, everyone is innocent here. When it comes to posting private team manners, it's always going to be a bad show because it's hard to fully portray the context. This stuff happens. The nature of competing is stressful, but it takes a healthy team to talk about it uh, privately. Uh, then uh, Vandy, who is who is a tier one player, not going to really touch on how Ye was on DSG simply because I have no clue other than the two clips that could be completely out of context. In our few months together on Cloud9, he was a great teammate and we have never had any toxicity issues with Ye. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that going from T1 uh, from tier one players to the last two teams uh, as tier two or two, three players is a massive change and would cause frustration in with the most competitive people. And then Steel makes a uh, snarky comment and, and Vanity says that, no, like you, you're a decent player. Cause I'm sure they're friends. It's a hundred percent bad to air out things because it's seen as unprofessional, but to be pushed out of the esports scene, have career sideline or to have the uh, community narrative uh, speak bad on you or your ex teammates, then sometimes people have no choice. What, what do you mean? No one talked bad about gangsta about any of the players in DSG. The worst thing that I ever heard from a yay stream was that just there was chemistry issues. I, I don't understand where this uh, self-victimizing attitude is coming from from these players. Uh, then um, FNS goes on this kind of kind of rant, kind of similar, uh, where he's talking about things that happen in NRG and how, despite there being conflicts between uh, the players on that team, they didn't air out any of their dirty laundry. Do Crashies and Victor and Chet tweet about it? No. We don't, because that just stays within the team. There's a certain level of respect when you're a competitor that you have to have for your teammates, regardless of how things went, no matter what. And, and these people, these people just exude, I'm sorry, the word cringe comes to mind. And I don't use that word too often, but this is just cringe. Do you not have any semblance of professionalism? Like, I would never play with someone who did this. You're posting clips of private communications within the team on Twitter, a public forum where everyone else gets to see what's happening. Just because you're a hater. It, that's pathetic. He frequents the, the VCT competitive uh, subreddit. And all he does is half of the time he's talking shit about Ye. It's just like, like, why? Like, why do you spend so much energy dwelling on someone who isn't even part of your team anymore? Isn't in the same region as you? Like, I, I don't get it. It's just so, like, mind-boggling. That, that pretty much covers, like, everything. I mean, look, I, I'll give you an anecdotal story. Because when, when I was, like, a smaller YouTuber... Um, I, I was the, I was, I wouldn't say I wasn't even the coach, but I was the, the IGL for, for, for a small esports team. And it was me, like one of my best friends and, uh, a couple of mutual people uh, that agreed to play. And I was one of those people who was, uh, very vocal about like how I wanted the team to be run, uh, about how the strats were going to be run and, people let me know that I was a little too strict and that was fine. And I tried to adjust. I tried to be more open to ideas because in my head I was like, Oh, I'm like a VCT guy. Like I, I just, I just want to like run like competitive strats instead of like thinking about like how my teammates would feel. And so like, so midway through the season, um, I changed the compositions to fit like the characters that w would suit my players better. And yeah, there was more stress along the season because when we were like, when it was that playoff week, uh, we had practiced a lot and we had gotten third place. And yeah, I was a little, I was a little 
mad that we got third place because third place is kind of kind of bad and we were so close to like getting first um we just kind of fumbled the last two games so it was it was it was pretty stressful and and do i do do i regret the time that we had spent uh practicing and trying to win that premier tournament absolutely not would i take back some of the things that i did yeah but <clears throat> have any of my uh teammates come out and try to like expose me for being I wouldn't even say toxic, just, you know, sometimes a little passive aggressive, sometimes a little rude. No. And even even the the people in in the YouTube community, I don't think would 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 ever do that, knowing that some people get angry over competitive stuff. It's just ridiculous in my mind that that this it has to devolve into exposing people on Twitter. Just go and play your own game. Do your own thing. I don't I don't understand why we need to be doing this. That's about it. So yeah.